again. This week I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, give you my thoughts on the lens that I purchased as a replacement for the Pixco 8mm ultra wide angle lens that I reviewed a few weeks ago which I was as you know if you've watched that video I was extremely disappointed with it and it was returned within a week um, sadly I have to say it's just not really fit for purpose um, it might have been a poor example that I um, unfortunately ended up with but um, anyway that, that's a, another argument probably um, I decided to replace it with uh, this the Samyang 7.5 millimeter ultra wide some people classify it as a fisheye but of course it does give you um, full frame coverage on micro four thirds which is what I shoot of course and um, I'm delighted to say that uh, it's much much better than the Pixco it's far superior in every way in terms of cost um, I got it used but mint boxed with all the bits and pieces that you normally expect to get and it cost me a hundred pounds compared to the 60 I think that I paid for the Pixco if memory serves me so <clears throat> I just thought I'd uh, take a few minutes to give you my opinions on it I've been out and about with it now for a couple of weeks and I'm going to go go through some images that I've taken with this lens um, in and around Liverpool city centre and my local park just to give you a flavour of the kind of thing that you can expect from it now the first thing I have to say is that um, <laughs> ultra wides are not going to be for everybody um, you can call it a fisheye if you want to, but I'm going to refer to it as an ultra wide. Um, to me, a fisheye lens gives you a circular image, um, uh, which this certainly does not. So, ultra wides, they are not going to be for everybody, and they're not going to be. This is not the kind of lens that I'm going to shoot every day of the week. Far from it. You'll probably understand why when I show you some of the results it does give you massive distortion if you're not careful and to um, disguise that distortion you have to be incredibly careful and or do a lot of um, fiddling around in post-processing it weighs 190 grams um, it's got nine elements I think it is nine elements in seven groups with a six bladed diaphragm that's about as much of the technical gump as you're going to get from me. Um, I'm much more concerned with how a lens feels, how it works, what the results are like when you use it in the real world. Um, there aren't really any minuses from my point of view. Of course it is a completely manual lens. It's mainly metallic construction, lovely metal lens mount, absolutely no contact because the whole thing is manual the lens cap very clever um, it clips on to the petal lens hood um, which is built in this is not removable but it's a very clever design because the inside of the baffles are ridged there's a ridge on the inside of each and that's what the lens hood actually clips to so you may think it would fall off or pull off quite easily it doesn't it's on there until you actually release the clips clever design not possible of course to put um, external filters on this because of the design of the front element you can see it's very curved indeed um, and of course the the petal lens hood prevents that anyway uh, if I mount it onto my camera, onto the EM1, it doesn't in any way disturb the balance of the camera. Um, it doesn't add to it. It's not front heavy or anything like that. Um, doesn't protrude a long way. And um, 
it's just a good all-round lens to use. The focusing ring is nice and thick, well ribbed, so it's easy to get a grip of and it's intuitive when you're looking through the viewfinder. And the aperture ring is click stopped from 3.5 down to f22. Now the beauty of ultra wide lenses like this really is that focusing is <laughs> it's really not required. What I've done for practically every one of the photographs you're going to see is to um, set the lens to infinity and then just pull it back maybe two or three mil and then I've shot everything at I think it was round about certainly between 5.6 and f8 and um, focusing from there on is not required. Everything from literally um, a foot in front of the camera right to infinity is going to be rendered sharp. The depth of field is huge. So what I thought I'd do is to show you some images that I've taken with this to give you an idea of the effects that you can expect to get. Now the first two images are really um, a comparison. The very first image is one that I took of the gates, the main entrance to my local park, Princess Park here in Liverpool. And the first one is taken on the Pixco the 8mm Pixco and you can see that the um, corners and edges are incredibly soft whereas the second um, image that I've um, put up for you to have a look at is taken with this lens from pretty much the same viewpoint and there's a massive difference. Um, a lot of modern architecture lends itself well to these um, ultra wide lenses so I spent a couple of days and a few hours um, in the sort of uh, both the waterfront area and the financial district in Liverpool photographing some of the modern architecture. And as I say, you get tremendous distortion with ultra wide lenses anyway. So you've got two options. You either embrace it, uh, which I've done with a lot of these images like this one of number four St Paul's um, Square uh, in the financial district uh, by getting in really close and angling the camera way up into the sky. It works quite often. Obviously you've got a vertical format um, image with a lot of these. You either embrace it in this way or you try and compensate for it afterwards in post-processing. But as soon as you tilt the camera uh, either up or down from the horizontal, um, everything starts to either bow in towards the top of the frame or out. Um, there's, there's no way around that, unfortunately. Um, if we just um, skip on to uh, a few more, these are nearly all either financial buildings or hotels. Uh, Statue of the Beatles, which is in a very confined space. Um, outdoor statues and uh, art installations. Derelict buildings. And even a bit of fun with um, a selfie in front of, uh, in front of a glass panelled building. Now these two shots taken down on the waterfront um, illustrate the kind of um, effect that you will get with ultra wide lenses. The buildings on the immediate uh, extremities left and right are curving in. Now um, even though the camera is held pretty much horizontal in this case, as you can probably tell by the um, horizon line which is pretty much straight, um, you, you can't get away from this uh, bowing effect of the uh, edges, building on the edges of the frame. So this is as it was shot in camera. And then uh, looking at the next one, it's been tweaked in post-processing. It's by no means perfect, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with it to try and restrict the effect that you get. Um, it's difficult to portray exactly how uh, close some of these objects were to the camera when I was taking them. 
Um, this one of a stairwell on an underground car park is one of my favourite spots in Liverpool actually and it lends itself well to monochrome interpretation which is what I've done here. I've got several sort of um, variations on the theme but I really do like that one and it's only uh, possible with an ultra wide lens like this 7.5mm. Again some um, modern architecture um, both in colour and then converted to monochrome just to give you an idea of the kind of um, impact that you can get by changing from one to the other. We have some of the Metropolitan Cathedral here. Now this one of the stairs the the arched building you can see on the right is actually the crypt of the original planned Metropolitan Cathedral which was started and then abandoned during the war and the steps leading up to the top level uh, lead you to the um, concourse at the back of the Metropolitan Cathedral um, and you can see in this shot of the uh, cathedral taken from the top of those stairs these two glass pillars um, which in reality are perfectly straight and of course with the ultra wide they're bending in towards the middle I could play around with this and straighten them out but I quite like it as it is to be honest with you um, again you know this shot is impossible with even my 12 mil uh, lens uh, there's no way that I can get everything in from the top of the stairs using a 12 mil had to be the 7.5 I thought I'd show you some shots taken in my local park to illustrate the fact that you don't have to go down this route of architectural work with an ultra wide um, you can get away with some landscape photography using ultra wides and it's more difficult to appreciate the um, distortion with these images. <clears throat> in real life this is a curve in the bend of the river but it's not anything like that extreme but these are the um, two shots I think will illustrate the fact that you can get away with some really quite useful landscape effects um, if you so require. Ultrawides like this are not going to be suitable for portraiture some sports photography yes things like uh, BMX bikes and skateboarders when they're coming up the ramp and flying through the air immediately in front of you uh, they can be um, really quite effective using this kind of uh, kind of optic so would I recommend the Samyang 7.5 ultra wide most definitely yes um, it's a huge improvement over the um, previous Pixco that I had uh, there's, there's just no comparison whatsoever this is far superior really well made good performer good value for money it's not the kind of lens that's going to appeal to everybody I fully appreciate that and it's not the kind of lens that I'm going to go out and shoot on a weekly basis um, maybe not even monthly but it's in the bag when I need it um, if I <laughs> Right, Alan, that's enough of that. Goodness me, you could drone on and on all day about this stuff. But what people are really interested in is what happened to the two free giveaway lenses. Well, I had a few comments left in the video itself, followed by about 50 emails which I think for a small channel like mine is pretty good going, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't exactly pull the winner out of a hat. I did uh, speak with Nick during the mean whilst, just to get his opinion as to who he thought was the most deserving. And we both agreed that of all the people that emailed in, there was one that we thought we both agreed on it was probably the most deserving and that is a Mr David Olsen and the lenses have already been sent off to him in fact by the time 
Uh, he sees this video, he may well already have them. Um, I hope he enjoys them. I wish that I had another couple of lenses that I could send out. It would be so good to be able to do that, but who knows, in the future, we shall see. Um, future videos. Uh, one thing, uh, Affinity Photo version 2 is now out and I have invested in it. So I'll take uh, an opportunity soon to give you my brief opinions on that. And also I have a new to me camera, which I've been tinkering around with for the past week. And I'll be talking a little bit about that. Maybe not in the next video, but certainly the one after that. We'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, of course, I hope everybody is enjoying their photography and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.